Hello everybody and welcome back to Olive Boy Pens. I've got a spicy one for you today. I am taking a look at the Parker 51 Next Generation and the pen on which it is based, the Parker 51. The Parker 51 was first released in 1941 and found massive international success over the next 30 years that it was in production, selling estimates are in the tens of millions. This was a ubiquitous pen all over the world. Part of its success in my eyes was the fact that it also had a universal appeal in design, but also at multiple levels. So you could get, you know, a super expensive, you know, double jewel, uh, 51 with like the empire cap, which goes for like thousands of dollars today. Or you could get a 51 special, which is a steel nibbed, steel trimmed, aerometric filling pen that's still really, really good. It was one of the most influential designs of the 20th century, and it continues to be influential, as you may notice by the fact that Parker has just re-released it. This isn't the first time that Parker has re-released the 51. They actually did it back in 2002, which was a reimagining of the uh, early Parker 51s with the Empire cap, which it has, you know, as I showed earlier, it's got that really cool copper and gold tone situation. Uh, that one experienced a good amount of cracking in the plastic. Um, and this new version is not without its issues either, though I haven't experienced any plastic cracks. So where does the Parker 51 next generation fit into this legacy of 51s. Like the original one, it comes in a couple of different colors and trim levels. I have the more modestly priced steel nib version that comes in around $80, uh, but there is also a gold nib version that is in the 200-ish range, uh, depending on where you look. Let's take a look at the similarities and differences between these two distant cousins, let's call them. All right, so let me provide you with some objective information about these Parker 51s. The Parker 51 Next Generation, and then these two original run 51s. For the purposes of this comparison, this is going to be the Aero 51, this is going to be the VAC 51, and I'll explain why in a moment. So, these both have machined acrylic bodies. Nice, smooth, lustrous finish. Of course, you know, that depends on which exact one you get. These are vintage pens, of course, and they can always be restored. This one was actually a flea market find. The top of the cap is a beautiful celluloid jewel, which looks really nice. Uh, some have aluminum ones, some have ones on both ends, um, but both of these have the nice classic gray celluloid cap tops, which I think look really good. These are steel pull caps which are nice they have a clutch system inside which makes it really easy to snap it on and hold on firmly without clicking into anything uh, it's kind of hard to show you that because of the way a camera works but what these both have as well are gold nibs so gold nibs were Pretty common on fountain pens uh, back, you know, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, um, just because that's that's what you would use. Um, and steel nibs were on super, 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 super cheap pens because steel just wasn't as good as it is now. These also use a what I'll call a true hood, uh, which means that they have a feed inside called a collector that interfaces with the inside of the hood and creates a nice ink flow adjustment. Uh, so these very rarely burp in your pocket like some other vintage pens will. They're great everyday carry pens even today. Um, what actually connects to the tiny little tubular nib is an ebonite feed, so that's going to give you really good ink flow. And again, gold nibs, which is always a plus. Got the little clutch ring here, which is nice. Um, and then the way these two differ, obviously in color, but in filling systems as well. So this is an Aero 51, as I said earlier, which means that it has an aerometric filler, um, which uses a PVC sack and a presser bar, and you squeeze it to fill up. These are full, so I won't do it, but 
It's kind of like, you know, a modern squeeze converter. Uh, and these are great because they're super durable. Most of them don't need any restorations like something with a latex sack would, or something like a vacuumatic system would. Uh, the vacuumatic system was before the aerometric system, it was on the Parker 51, from which it gained its name. Um, and it is a little bar here with a diaphragm inside that creates a vacuum inside the pen when you press it. Do that a couple times, your pen is full, and it holds a lot more ink than the uh, aero filler. So with those beauties out of the way, let's take a look at this guy. So the Parker 51 Next Generation visually looks pretty similar. I mean, it's a plastic pen with a metal cap. The body is likely machined. I couldn't find any like injection molding parting lines, but the main difference, which you may have just noticed, is that it is a twist cap. So there are threads on the barrel, threads right on the edge of the cap lip, um, and they interface with this, again, steel cap. This one is actually slightly heavier by about two grams. The original 51 caps are about eight grams. This is about 10. That's not a huge difference to me, but it's just worth noting. Uh, part of that two grams might be the fact that it has a kind of all-in-one piece cap top and jewel. So there's a weird gap there, which I'll get more to in my opinion, um, but it's not flushed with anything. It's just kind of floating there. Uh, and then the cap, uh, the clip is uh, stamped. So it's just, you know, it's not these kind of deep like relief grooves of arrows. There's no blue diamond. Um doesn't say Parker. It's 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 a reused clip from a different Parker pen. Uh, you got the cap logo with you know France where Parkers are made now, and then the Parker logo. Uh, moving on to the body of the pen, again yeah that plastic body um, threads and then the section connector which uh, you know screws into the body uh, is metal uh, on plastic threads which I I don't have too many reservations about that. I have plenty of pens that use that system and haven't were not on me yet. The nib and feed are a point of contention for many. You may notice that there's a fair gap around the nib and feed compared to the other 51s uh, because this is not a true hood. A true hood interfaces with the with the feed or collector in the 51s case, but this is actually the feed and nib from a Parker Vector or Parker Jotter um, just covered in a piece of plastic. Um, this is a steel nib, of course, like I said earlier, there's a gold nib as well, but this is the steel nib version. The gold nib version differs only in material. It's the same design at the front. Um, and in my experience, this feed is not very good. This is actually, so this isn't my pen. It was sent to me for review by a friend who had to replace the feed because the feed just would keep skipping and not working. Um, another thing I'll note too is, so actually I recorded a couple of sections of this video earlier and then the footage got damaged. So that left a week in which these pens were not being used. Um, and both of these 51s wrote no problem right out of the cap, you know. Um, and this actually, I had to like dip in water to get going again. So the cap seal is worse. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of ink. And the filling system is a cartridge converter. Uh, it does not come with a converter. It comes with a cartridge. But it is compatible with Lamy cartridges and converters. You'll notice that I'm using a Lamy converter here because it's what I've got on hand. But yeah, uh, it would have been nice to have the converter in the box um, for the price. This is, you know, runs about $80. Um, but that is the objective information I can offer to you about these three pens. Of course, you can notice some of my opinion is sprinkled in there, here and there, but... Mostly these are the features of all the 51s. Now let's get on over to my opinions. Okay, I lied, it's not time for my opinions yet. We need to do writing samples. Um, of course, these are gold nibs and steel nibs, so I'm not gonna factor this too much into the decision. Um, I'll bring that up a little bit more later, but I just wanted to do a quick little jot with these three pens. I'm gonna start off with the 51 arrow, because I feel like it. This has got a fine, gold nib, like I said, really nice flow and feedback. All of these pens are inked with Mont Blanc Egyptian Blue. Can't really do a nib sketch here, <laughs> but uh, that's vaguely Parker 51 shaped. 
But yeah, these are these are just solid everyday use pens. Um, I've seen them compared a lot in terms of usability to the Lamy 2000, which I would agree with, you know, hooded nib, good ink capacity and good gold nib. Here's the Parker 51 Vacumatic. This one is also not a great comparison because it is an aftermarket nib. Um, it is a kind of fat, medium, broad architect uh, that I ground myself. Pretty proud, pretty proud of this one, I say, as it skips on the paper. This is the one I use the most. Uh, it is so fun to use. It's very frequently in my everyday rotation. And I don't know. It's just a fun one. You don't see a lot of broad nibbed 51s. Um, and I figured I should have one. And last, but maybe least, the next generation. Um, I've got ink on my hands from this pen a couple times. Um, and I actually, as you'll see in the opinions part, I have some ink on my freaking face. You'll notice the color is darker um, than the vac. I don't know why. I guess it just has the bas better seal on the cap, but the arrow also darkened a little bit. Who knows why? The nib is stiff and unremarkable. It's not scratchy or anything. It's just not particularly enjoyable. It's got decent flow. Um, it also is a little bit stubby for a medium. Um, but, you know, I can't necessarily complain about this aspect too much. It's just not very special feeling. And that's going to do it for the writing samples. Now on to my opinion. So, you've seen the objective information on these pens. You've seen how they write and a little bit of my opinions on those. What's my overall take on the 51 Next Generation? Overall, it is poor value. I'm not even judging that based on the fact that it's a Parker 51 remake. As a pen, it is poor value. It is $80, it has a steel nib, it doesn't feel particularly well made. It's not falling apart in my hands, I've definitely held worse, but it doesn't work as a pen very well. It completely dried out on me after, you know, about a week, which is fair, other pens do that, it's just... I have a lot of pens. I like to rotate through them, and a lot. most of my pens will last that week without use. Um, plus the fact that the feed just does not work very well. I have experienced burps. This is even after a replacement feed has been put in. Um, and you might notice that I have... It's kind of hard to see on camera. I have ink on my face from when I was doing the writing sample earlier. So... You could, you could get ink on your face using this pen, just be warned. The fact that it doesn't come with a converter for $80 is a little insulting to me. I know other pens probably are guilty of that, but I mean, at least with a Lamy pen, any pen generally over like 70-ish is gonna come with a converter. I just, I, I don't really get why you would buy this pen too, especially because the the fears that a lot of people have about vintage pens they're fragile they're gonna leak they're gonna not work well don't apply to 51 arrows as much as they do other vintage pens i'm not saying you can't get a bad vintage 51 i'm saying that you can get a great vintage 51 or 51 special for around 80 dollars and you're gonna get a steel or a gold nib the steel nibs are right better than this version of the steel nib. Uh, you're going to get an aerometric filler, which is going to last forever. It's installed in the pen. You can't take it out, but it's in there. You can fill the pen and it's going to be built better. It's going to have the nice slip cap. It's going to be made of that nice acrylic um, and they're super durable. They are heirlooms that can be passed down, whereas this doesn't feel necessarily like it was built to last. The details are not very well fleshed out. Um, I don't really like how it looks really, it, it looks very similar to the 51 at a glance, but when you notice that like the curves don't really flow with each other very well, they're interrupted by the threads and also this metal band, which is completely unadorned. Um, I feel like it was put there kind of to harken back to the clutch ring, but the clutch ring had that nice little like dip in there and it actually did something. 
Plus, I mean, the faux hood with a jotter nib inside of it is just like, come on. You could have tried a little harder. You can look at, like, Wingsung, a Chinese company, has been making incredible 51 vacuumatics for a while now. And they have, you know, proper feeds and they look the part and, you know, whatever your opinion on, you know, the intellectual property debate was, which my take on it is that there was no good 51 out, it's kind of fine. But now that there is, some people might, you know, get all fussy about it. Um, and that's a topic for another video. But... It's proven, my point is, it's proven that you can do a good 51 in the year 2021. And this is not a good 51. This is a a hollow shell, much like the grip of the pen. It is a hollow shell of a pen. Um, and it makes me a little bit sad. It's clear that fountain pens as a hobby are on the upswing. And I think Parker's noticed this. And I think they have tried to cash in on that cachet of the 51 because it was one of the greatest pens ever made and it remains one of the greatest pens ever made because you can still use it and if you can get over that fear and buy from you know a reputable vintage seller or really just a cheap 51 i i got this 51 back obviously it needed to be restored but i got it at a flea market for like 40 bucks and I sent it out. I got it fixed. It cost me maybe another 40. Got the spare cap because it had the wrong cap on it before. Anyway, long story short, cost me maybe a little bit over $100 for a gold nib, vacuumatic filling, you know, beautiful 51 from the 40s. Now, I didn't pay for this pen, but even if I had, I would, I think if I had, I'd be even more mad because like this is not it, it is not a worthy successor to the 51 name. And that is frankly disappointing. But I'm curious because I have seen a lot of other reviewers, people in comments sections on Instagram, pen stores, being like, oh my God, this is such a cool pen. And obviously there are people out there who are into it. Um, so I'm curious to hear from you guys. What, what's your take? What's your, what's your opinions on the 51? Uh, leave a comment. Uh, do you prefer the vintage 51? Do you prefer the next generation? That would be wild. I would love to hear from you if that's your take. I'm excited to discuss that with y'all. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little comparison review combination. And yeah, I will uh, see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.